Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Sean Robinson. I'm the Specification Director here at Polypipe. Uh, I'm going to take you through a very quick introduction to what green urbanisation is. So green urbanisation is the evolution of sustainable drainage uh, when compared to conventional drainage techniques, which by its textbook definition is that combination of technologies that optimise green assets through an extended and fully integrated sustainable water management network. Absolutely demonstrating that appropriately designed suds can provide great multifunctional systems. Here, the difference being the integration of green assets from the outset to provide a wider resilience capability of the system. Given the ever growing pressures on the built environment, such as climate change, population growth, loss of biodiversity, and pressures on resources such as water, the increasing demand on project designs requires that drainage systems should not only provide stormwater resilience, but on what else can these systems give us? What other multifunctional benefits can they provide? Let's look to maximise the use of these assets where possible. Which through the delivery of conventional sustainable drainage, where the green infrastructure assets usually sat outside of the system or weren't wholly embedded, the resilience to flooding and drought management could be and is potentially limited. The increasing demand on project designs requires that these systems should not only provide stormwater resilience, but on what else can these systems give us? What other multifunctional benefits can they provide? Let's look to maximise the use of these assets where possible. When maximised and delivered accordingly, the benefits as shown on the screen are numerous. But let's also link the capability of these systems to the requirements currently set out in legislative initiatives such as carbon net zero and biodiversity net gain. The inclusion of green assets as part of the wider management strategy can certainly help towards the delivery of the goals set out here. If we look at the options available and as stated previously, the scale of delivery is unlimited. Green urbanisation subsystems aren't limited to one technique. The combination of these on one project can deliver that system resilience we're looking for. Shown on the right hand side is the traditional such management train with one subtle difference. The green assets are embedded from the outset. Ultimately, what, what are we promoting? We're promoting that, that is that fundamental change from managing water in a linear fashion. Getting rid of water as quickly as possible, not taking advantage of that free resource that lands on developments. With multiple SUDS interventions, we can capture and reuse this valuable resource, reducing the impact on the sewer system, but also using the water to good use to support those green assets. Which essentially is what green urbanisation is. By embedding green assets as part of the SUDS management train, both the volumetric and green asset resilience are improved. Increasing sustainability of greenery, increased biodiversity, increasing the system capacity and through water reuse reducing that potable water demand. By way of example the locations, opportunities, the scale are all infinite. We can approach both new and retrofit projects in the same way and the good news is that this is happening now. The toolbox required to deliver green urbanisation is available across all sectors including sports from Polypipe now. What is next? How can we scale this up? We can manage water on a plot by plot basis, be it residential, commercial, uh, school or office block. We can influence and determine how green urbanisation solutions can be incorporated into a master plan. Being strategic with the management of water and the techniques used to best maximise its use and the impact on the wider environment to that master plan. And ultimately, what is the potential? Could we manage a whole catchment at any one time, understand where and at what levels the water are within the network. And in relation to current weather data, manipulate the levels and create volume within the network to account for an impending storm event without overloading the system. And at all times, maximising water for reuse to support those green assets. We are seeing a shift in how involved clients are on the delivery of their projects. And the key legislation, as mentioned, such as carbon net zero and biodiversity net gain, are driving this. Simply with realising the value of collaborative design early, 
the costs and more importantly value are realised up front, which potentially mitigates costly design changes through substitution of project product late on in the project life cycle, which could also reduce the impact of risk. As you can see from early engagement in the inclusion of green urbanisation on construction projects, everybody can benefit. But collaboration is key, buy-in and joined up thinking by all stakeholders from the client right through to the delivery of the projects is really important. Thank you for your time and please, if you have any further queries or questions, please don't hesitate to contact us for more information. Thank you.